Hello people. Today we're going to do a brake job on the old Tahoe. This has been a long time coming. First thing you want to do, obviously, is get your jack under it. Find a good position, like up under the uh, shock, to where the jack will keep a good hold on it. And then you just want to raise it up until the tire comes up off the ground. Like so. I always raise it up a little bit more than just the bare minimum to get it off the ground because some jacks have a tendency to, to leak down a little bit, uh, which isn't a real big problem. You can always put it back on. But uh, we'll get her taken off here and we'll get started on the brakes. Okay. Fail number one is the Canon. Uh, both batteries are dead in it for some reason. Probably because I haven't charged them in probably a month or better now. Um, but the next step is to get the lug nuts off and take the tire off. Now, what I usually do is I'll put the tire up under the vehicle because uh, if the jack ever comes down, that tire being underneath the frame of the vehicle might save your legs if you're up under it working like I'm getting ready to be. Go ahead and stop this for now until I get this tire off because with these mag wheels it's a little bit of a pain. Okay, now I've gotten in here and as you can see there's still plenty of brake pad. Part you need to watch for is between this piece of metal and this piece of metal. This is the rotor. Now there's actually quite a bit on there still and same thing on the front side there but this isn't the one that was squealing either. So, since they're close anyway, I mean, there's probably several thousand miles on these still, but since I don't want to keep taking this thing apart and not changing them, I'm going to go ahead and swap them out now. i got a set of performance pads to go back in there, the porcelain ones, and I've always had a lot of good luck with them. Uh, you can see here, of course, this is mostly dirt and dust and stuff from being, uh, oh, well, I can't say that exactly. I don't know if you'll be able to see it real clearly on this or not, but if it'll focus and you can see it real clear, there's little cracks all in the rotor. Now, I'm going to chance it. But there's a good chance that uh, these rotors are getting hot enough that since those little cracks are there, that they'll be needing replaced soon. Only problem I've got with that is this isn't a, a, the type of setup where you can just take the rotor off like it is in most cars and go get a new set of rotors and have them turned. This is a solid piece with uh, the all new, well, I don't know if it's all new, but um, it's a solid piece this part right here doesn't uh, the rotor doesn't slide over the uh, bearings and everything like I do in most cars this is all one solid piece but so if those rotors are warped which I probably ought to take them and have them checked but this right here this little piece of metal that's your wear indicator that's what usually squeaks when the brakes need changed what it'll do is rub up against the um, the face of your caliper and that's what makes the squeaking noise. Well, I'm getting a squeaking noise. It's occasional but I still get it and like I said it's coming from the other wheel so I'm assuming that that side is probably going to be a little bit more depleted than this one. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and I'll show you everything step by step as I go. Okay first things first first thing we're gonna have to do is take the bolts out that hold this caliper on there's one on the top one on the bottom 
This one only has the two. Uh, some of these calipers have the star wrenches, which these are them. Um, this particular one does not. This is still an old enough vehicle that it uses just a regular uh, six-sided flat wrench or um, Allen wrench, if you would. And on this one, it's that large one. I've changed these out before, so I know right off which one it is. So what you do is get your ratchet, and then you get in there get at it. In case you're wondering why I went the other way first, to give it a, if it's seized in there, you want to get it loosened up a little bit first. Kind of helps break it loose to go a little tighter, just a bump or two tighter, and then back it out. And for I don't know for whatever reason, I don't know the physics behind it all, but that's what helps get it out of there a little faster. All right. Now these are pretty long bolts, but they've got a really short thread on them, so you could be turning forever and not get the thing to come out right. What I like to do is pull down on them a little bit. Before you get it all the way out, you need to take your wrench at, or your socket and that out. And there's the first pin. I put everything on my running boards here because that's a good safe place to keep them where they won't roll off. Drop it up twice. Oh shoot. Drop it down. Then up. Now this top one on this particular truck sits really close to the frame where it mushrooms out for the um, for the spring, the coil springs. So you got to take your ratchet off and just turn this one the rest of the way out by hand. I said I think there's only four threads on this one. Right. Took that bolt out anyway. So now it should, a lot of times you may run into a, a problem with getting it up uh, off of the, the rotor. Uh, something that's going to make things a little easier for you is if you can do it. Use a wrench or a pry bar. All right, you see all that right there? That's what happened when I changed out this other side. I've compressed that uh, cylinder enough that it actually leaked out some of the fluid onto the frame. So that's why you want to check and make sure that the fluid's topped off and then check it again after you've uh, cycled through the brakes to re-expand the calipers. Also another good thing to do is uh, get your grease guns and grease up all your fittings under here. There's usually one for the upper ball joint which you can see mine's a little on the depleted side right now so that'll definitely need it. There's one for the lower ball joint down here and your uh, steering arm, there's one right there, all kinds of little places, if, if, but if you see the little little fitting like that, it's always good to go ahead and grease those up while you're under here. It doesn't take but a few seconds to do and it'll save you a lifetime of uh, hassle and pain and having to change those things out before it's time for them uh, again later on. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing buttoned up, I'm all done with the brakes now. Uh, this other side was kind of messed up, but uh, it wasn't even as close as the the passenger side was. Another thing, before I forget it too, when you're putting the tire back on, and I don't care if it's when you're uh, just changing one out on the road that had a flat or what, but when you're putting the tire back on, you always want to go in a crisscross pattern. It's like say, we'll start with this one, tighten it down. 
or at least snug it up good then go down here to this one and tighten it up or snug it down then you come back up to here back down to here and back to here and then when you put the final tightening on them you do the same exact thing doesn't matter which place you start from it you just need to do the opposite one just a crisscross pattern like that this is under the hood it's your brake caliper now the most it needs to be is full up to the top of that little mark right there now because I've compressed the cylinders it's well way more full than that and it's actually leaked some of the fluid out right there down onto the frame that I showed you a minute ago so now what we need to do is just ever so gently ease on the brake and I mean this do this just absolutely as slow as you possibly can because what this is doing is just slowly pushing the fluid back down into the calipers Now it'll go all the way to the floor, that's fine. And that's on the floor right there. And let it up. Make sure it's all the way up. Wait a little bit. And start the same thing. Now, usually about the second or third time it starts getting a little stiff. That's okay. You want to do this at least three maybe four times to make sure that the calipers are pumped back up full enough and then check your fluid to make sure that yeah see that time it didn't go quite all the way to the floor and it got stiff right there at the end of the travel one more time okay right there it's pretty stiff I'll come back out here Check the fluid, it still appears to be at the top, but sometimes these thick plastic uh, containers can kind of fool you. So what you need to do is real easily pop all four latches, or if it's an older setup and you got a bar that comes across, you can pop the bar off usually with a screwdriver because it's not very easily done by hand. And this is actually supposed to have stayed on the the lid. Now as you can see on this one there's a little notch in there and as long as the fluid is up to that notch it's not very far down in there either but as long as the fluids up to the top of that notch it's pretty well full so this is fine I've I pumped the fluid back into the calipers and we're ready to put her back together and Crank it up, bump it a few times with the, uh, I see it pushed out some of the fluid there too, but uh, pump up the brakes with the truck going and we're good. Started down the road in this thing and my anti-lock comes on, which it's been prone to do that from time to time. I need to make sure that this thing isn't going to lock these pads to the rotor like it did on my wife's truck, on her Suburban. Yeah, I may just need more fluid in it than what I got. I do have a bottle of fluid still, so. And it's stopping okay. It's just a little spongy, but that's to be expected when you first change them out. Oh, there the analog went off so maybe it'll work right. <laughs> right now it's pulling like it uh, like I had the trailer on the back.
kind of locks off and it's stopping on the dime. That's it. Everything seems to be going good now. And I uh, want to thank my neighbor, Michael, for letting me uh, use his barn and everything. And that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching and you have a good one.